Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. This is lecture number five, cardiac vitals, blood pressure, quick overview. I cover the blood pressure, uh, mean arterial pressure uh, lecture in another video. Uh, please see that one. All right, moving on. All right, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is blood pressure. Now, blood pressure is a measurement that we use to assess um, perfusion. And when we're assessing perfusion, perfusion, it's about cardiac output. And cardiac output is um, perfusion, perfusion, O2 blood. Okay. All right, so some basics is that, you know, like I said in a previous lecture, you choose your parents wisely. And a person over time with uh, these problems is going to, um, can develop uh, problems with their blood pressure. And we're talking about high blood pressure today. So high blood pressure is, um, there's two types with NCLEX. All right, so NCLEX has two issues about this. Uh, hypertensive crisis, okay, that's covered in another lecture. Um, and that is acute, and that's risk for strokes, okay. But if you understand that hypertensive crisis is a risk for strokes, that means that anybody with high blood pressure is a risk for strokes. So we have modifiable factors we covered in our previous lecture where we talked about, you know, uh, things that you could modify, like your diet, your exercise, uh, diabetes, hemoglobin A1C. Um, and so what happens when you have a high blood pressure? You have two numbers. So you have a systolic, right, systolic, and a diastolic. And 120 on 80. Okay, and that's a normal blood pressure. There's actually a, uh, a, um, a range that they use. And this range is up here, oops, where there's a normal rate. Um, there's pre-hypertension, there's stage one, stage two. There's actually a couple of different graphs that I found. So usually with NCLEX, they tend to focus more on uh, vitals in the sense of as far as markers. And what those markers mean is that, do you understand that there's a problem with blood pressure and usually going down? It's a fluid problem generally. Fluids that were given like IV fluids or what have you. But when we're talking about high blood pressure, we're talking about when a person gets high blood pressure, it's a risk. The risk is that over time, this blood pressure is going to cause damage to these vessels. And that damage to these vessels, these are coronary artery vessels that are outside the heart. So, and they're feeding the ventricle. And what happens is, is that this vessel can't handle this pressure over time. And so that's why we treat it. Okay, so the first thing is, is that a person gets a screening and it maybe but might be at a health clinic or something like that. And then they, they get blood pressure checked and then it's high. Okay, well, the first thing is a high blood pressure in one of these ranges, depending, it might be white coat syndrome. So white coat syndrome is basically where um, you see a doctor and because you are nervous and the stress response, uh, the blood pressure goes up. Well, that doesn't mean you have blood pressure if it's high. So what they do is generally they're going to take several measurements and those measurements will be done over time usually over a period of three months. And you're gonna take it at several times during that time, blood pressures, to see if it's actually high. Because blood pressure high right now is not a problem. The problem is later. And that problem is, like I said, strokes or damage to the vessels, coronary artery disease. And it makes them a prime area for, like I said before in the previous lecture, that cholesterol will start to bind to these arteries. The LDLs will start to bind. Well, with the LDLs binding to that because of the damage from the cardio, because of the hypertension, if the person isn't exercising, you know, and increasing the blood flow through here or changing their diet, like decrease some um, saturated fats or trans fats, decreasing the amount of red meat or their milk, what happens is, is that the person, um, the cholesterol starts to build. And it builds because of hypertension. And hypertension has made the area prime, ready for this cholesterol to bind to it. 
So a lot of times I think of a, a balloon that you blow up um, at nighttime. Well, why at nighttime? Whatever, no, no big difference. And you blow up this balloon, and then you leave that balloon to sit, you know, in the over overnight. And what happens is, is that the next day the balloon will be basically like this, right? It's going to be deflated, and it's going to have these little striations in the balloon. Well, those striations are kind of like what hypertension is, and that hypertension is the damage to those vessels. So. First thing is, once a person has hypertension, we look at them and then we evaluate them over a period of three months. And then we basically will then, um, we evaluate them in three months. And if they still have hypertension, then we're going to try to have them do some diet exercises over those three months and monitor their eating and all those type of things. If they still are, then we are going to probably do some sort of intervention. And that intervention is usually uh, medications or weight related or and that medication of choice generally first line is an ace ace is first ace inhibitors like lisinopril and covered in another lecture all right so let's go through our ace sleeps ace sleeps is we're going to start to monitor with um, acute problems and um, ace sleeps is a method that i do is to evaluate uh, knowledge all right so is it acute hypertension nope it's chronic because it's only acute if it's a hypertensive crisis um, it's chronic because it's a problem over time. time. How does it start? Well, modifiable factors we talked about in a previous lecture. Um, what are some labs resulting from it? Well, uh, the lab is actually the hypertension, right? So we monitor that. Does it affect the eating? Um, yeah, we're going to make sure that they modify their diet. Uh, low saturated fats, trans fats and um, low cholesterols, right? Everything that could, because we know that the hypertension and also low salt, because salt is gonna increase hypertension as well. Um, assessment, what is the assessment? It's called the silent killer because there's no real assessment other than um, the actual numbers. And when we see those numbers, we monitor over time. All right, so um, what's some prescriptions? Uh, they might start on ACE inhibitors. And what's some problems or procedures? Well, problems would be a stroke. Okay. And then the last thing is S, what stands out. And if you wonder what this A sleeps is, it's a method I use that can be found on nursing camp in order to evaluate critically thinking about the, about the problem. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. And in my lectures, you'll see me kind of go through this process. So S is the last point where I stand out and I think, okay, Hypertension. What stands out about it? Well, it's not acute right now, unless it's hypertensive crisis. Um, we generally will monitor over three months. Um, we try to check the modifiable things and try to do some treatment on those modifiables first before we ever start medications like ACE inhibitors. Um, the highest risk is stroke. So, so um, really, stage two, these kind of numbers, we're risking, this is a big issue for stroke. So we're worried about that. The damage is over time, like we said, and so it's more about that. So what's some other labs that we might look at? There's something like creatinine. So in a previous lecture, I talked about this BUN and creatinine, and part of this BMP, see my BMP lecture on that. And this BUN and creatinine, this creatinine is the kidney. So if this starts to elevate, um, that might be a hypertension issue. And that's why patients who are renal patients were very worried about hypertension. Okay, that's about wraps it up. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. And this is, you can be found on, oh, I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and also nursingcamp.com, where I cover hypertension. I also cover this sticky note on mean arterial pressure, which I'll be covering next. All right, that's it. Nurse on, and we'll see you next time.